Welcome to Mobile Masterpiece Theatre. For nearly 30 years, we've been proud to provide the energy that helps public television run. Josiah Cole is a slave trader. His wife is developing a dangerous attachment to one of the slaves he means to sell. The slave's an educated, dignified West African named Mahoru. Mahoru is one of several slaves Josiah has brought home so his wife Frances can teach them English. So they'll fetch a good price when he sells them to the city's rich middle-class merchants. Frances comes from the landed aristocracy and knows nothing about slavery. She reacts with horror at the cruelties to which her African pupils are subjected. Her shock develops into sympathy for them, then into affection, especially for Mahoru. It gradually becomes obvious to her that the man of admirable qualities is not her slave owner husband, Josiah, but the slave Mahoru. Josiah is a doltish, uneducated money grubber, the kind of man who spends his wedding night getting falling down drunk in the local tavern, a man willing to comply with an important customer's demand that a slave woman be brought out of the cellar for an after-dinner rape, a man who breaks the laws of his trade by packing 600 slaves into a ship built for only 300. A woman married to a man like Josiah might sensibly suspect she's made a serious mistake in life. Watching the enslaved Mahoru, Francis has begun to see a gentleman. When our last episode ended, she was asking Mahoru to teach her to dance. The lessons have begun. Concluding episode, a respectable trade. How many hats can a woman need? Sister, you'll never guess. I can be crossways. A John Bates rushed in like a mad thing. The hair is loose. They've sighted Matthew. I did not want to disturb Miss Cole. Dr. Hadley's come to attend to Luke. The poor little mites. Putrid he is this morning. I wager he's missing his mother something dreadful. Paste of ginger and brandy spread across his belly, sir. Well, that's a cure for the ague, sir. Yes, thank you, cook. Ah, oh, Moses. Miss Cole? Take the doctor up by the back stairs. I do apologize.
he's going. Where is he going? Home. Going home. How many of you are there in the house? Now, there are six, five. Can Rita take it? Yes. Read that. We meet every Tuesday evening in the Seven Stars Tavern on the quay. Try and get away. Is he better? He is dead. Oh, the little angels guard his soul. And teach them as took him away from his mother to leave little picket in his back where they belong. I'm afraid it's a risk you're going to have to take if you bring little children into England as slaves. Is he the first you've lost? No. And what did the other one die of? It was a woman. We found her dead one night. How awkward for you. Well, I must be getting on. I shall address my bill to Cole and Sons. It's a commercial loss, is it not? I shall pay. I shall pay myself. And where does your money come from, Mrs. Cole? It's very easy for you to despise me, Dr. Hadley, but you cannot blame me any more than I blame myself. How can I despise you? My university was endowed by a slave owner. All my patients are traders. This shirt is made from cotton picked on the plantations. We all profit from the wreck of Africa. We try to treat the Negroes benignly here. There's nothing benign about these household arrangements, Mrs. Cole. I believe that slavery will be ended soon. But the cruelty we have learned will poison us forever. What's he doing here? Good morning, Miss Cole. Sarah, it was Luke. He was very sick. Mrs. Cole has no authority to send for you. Please be on your way at once. I shall bid you good day. Do you have any idea how much he charges for a visit? Sarah, I am the mistress of this house. You're not the mistress of your own wits if you have dealings with him. Do you know who he is? A scoundrel and a hypocrite. He was six years surgeon on the slave ships, even some of ours. Now he peddles abolitionists, claptrap the length and breadth of Bristol. You know who puts cotton on his back? Yes, he told me. Sarah, Luke is dead. That is why he was here. In heaven's name, Luke is dead. Then why call a doctor? All you need is a man with a barrow. This is the third slave under your management we've lost. Fortunately, one has now been recovered. They've seized Matthew. Not as good as. He's hiding in one of the backs. We'll have him by nightfall. Get out of my sight. And you get back to your work too. Do you never have any work of your own to get back to? How dare you? I shall tell Josiah. Tell him. Tell him. <laughs> been buried just outside the churchyard I tried to get the minister to baptize him but he would not perhaps you should baptize me
May the blessing of the God everywhere. Some cared for others, some for themselves. They made no difference. But do you know what really matters? What really matters is that you hold your own God inside you. The priest chatter can make no difference. My father was a priest in the Holy. In any case, you seem to know the Bible almost as well as he did. As a boy, I used to think it was a talking thing. To hold it to my ear. I think the Bible could speak. <laughs> so then you slept with it under your pillow. I got sweet meat for every verse I knew. <laughs> Do you still remember it? Downstairs. Oh my God. Stand aside, Sarah. I must see my husband. He's busy. Let me in. This is none of your business. Get out of my way! Josiah, I must speak with you. I will take the boy now, Mr. Cole. <gasps> Do we? But we want it broken, sir. We want his spirit broken for good. In the West Indies, we'd brand his cheek. No, Mr. Bates. Our customers won't want him marked. Not in England. Take him away, clean him up. Uh, uh, Come on, boy, get him out of here! Uh, uh, I went out of Bristol, into the field. It was cold there. 
So cold. Cold as death. Nothing live. Nothing grew. There was a man in the hut. Made of straw. He let me stay if I work for him. But I was hungry. So hungry. I, I wanted to be with you. There was nowhere to hide. Nothing. Nothing but cold. Thank you. I do not want to see another day like today. I'd like to see you again. Francis! Are you up there? I'm coming, Josiah! I shall come to your bed tonight, Mrs. Cole. I'm unwell, Josiah. Please excuse me. A man likes a bit of comfort, Mrs. Cole. Old. Uh, six months for this and the, the nigger bridal. What do you mean? We pay on the nail, Mr. Cadge, and always have done. Miss Cole, your family have been good customers of mine since your father's day, but, well, perhaps you're becoming too fine and fancy for your own ships. Listen to me, Mr. Cadge. There are bills here for more than £50. Please, Sarah, not at breakfast. I had no idea you were not settling up. How many others are we indebted to? Oh, this can't go on. I would remind you that I am the holder of the purse strings, and it is a purse much to be enhanced by our new holding, the Hartwell. The Hartwell? It's money down the even. It's costing us a fortune. Our business is on the key with our ships. The Hartwell is our future, Sarah. It will be a gold mine in the longer stretch. When the rose comes in in the autumn, we will pay off all that we owe. <laughs> I've not even seen the books for the rose. Where are you hiding them? I have engaged a clerk to see to them. That's my work. I know you once helped with the book, Sarah. But we have come up in the world. It is not woman's work. And remember, the name of our company is Cole and Sons. Now, if you will excuse us, Mrs. Cole and myself have an important engagement today with the cream of Bristol society. The froth, you mean? Yeah. 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 
Has Lord and Lady Scott arrived yet? Not as yet. Stephen and Mrs. Waring, our circle is nearly complete. A good day to you all. Josiah, the hot well seems set fair for a new golden age. All that glisters may indeed be gold. And certainly the proverb applies to Mrs. Cole today. Why, thank you. But truly, it will be the bright and congenial presence of you all that will most enchant my aunt and uncle, to be sure. Oh, yes. They are on the way through the town as we speak. Uh, I have stationed slaves to greet them at the city bounds, uh, along with flowers and sweetmeats and all. Then old Ali Baba there can sprinkle them with attar of roses, eh, Mrs. Cole? <laughs> yes, indeed. Mrs. Shaw, I must thank you for your note respecting Moses, but alas, I'm afraid he's still a little untried. There's more to do with him before he can be released for sale. He is certainly still very pleasing, but I think you are right. <coughs> Excuse me, husband. Mr. Forsyth needs me. Excuse me. Mrs. Cole. I wish you to take this to Mr. Cole and tell him that I will join him presently. Certainly, Mrs. Cole. We have nothing to fear from Mr. Wilberforce and his rabble. I mean, they are all sap and no sinew. <coughs> What news on the Rialto, Josiah? Ladies and gentlemen, sadly, Lord and Lady Scott will not be able to join us. They have been detained at Whiteley's. It appears Lady Scott is indisposed. Oh, what a shame. Quel dommage. Uh, I, I, I have here a, a short speech which I was proposing. I think it, it would be best if I deliver it now. I was going to begin by thanking his lordship for No matter, Josiah. No matter. You are well? Yes. I just needed some air, that's all. You look like Aladdin. 
You look like a pill deprecot. Oh, really? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No. You are like Aladdin's lamp, made of wrought gold. That will do a little better. Come back with me. You're so fine. You're so genteel. But other people's industry, other people's risk, it means nothing. Not a piss in the wind. I'm sure they'll come another time. You can say that because it's easy for you. You can say that because you're his niece, whether he comes or not. But he was supposed to be my friend, my partner. I get credit on his name. If he gives me the cut direct in front of them all, what are they going to think? I was counting on you to bring him in. I was depending on you. This is another songbird, the blackbird. This is the male with his yellow beak. This is the female. She is brown. Mary, do you feel unwell? No. When they mate, the female lays speckled eggs. Blue and green. Mary? Mary? Come, Mary. What is it? What is it? Miss Conte, I cannot get the doctor. His healing is no good. You are a healer. You do it. It is not the same here, huh? I don't know if I can. Ehuru, take your power and use it. Save Mary. today. Never mind. Will you fetch Mrs. Cole? Explain to her that we have been waiting some considerable time. Oh, 
off the wheel. Leave us. I'm afraid we must tighten our belts. Brown must be dismissed. I have decided that Matthew is to be sold. Sir Charles Fairley will take him off our hands. If anyone can break him, Sir Charles will. Josiah, husband, please don't send him to that plantation. For my sake, please. Every turn, at every turn, you seek to challenge and defy me. But to satisfy you, yet again, I sell him by auction here in Bristol. How is that, madame? Eh? Does that satisfy you? But sold he must be, and sold he will be. We should be drilling. We should be farming battalions. We should be collecting pikes. We should be keeping within the law. <laughs> Nobody ever gave up power and advantage because of a petition. Um, Dr. Hadley. Hello. Well, come in. I'd like you to meet a good friend of mine. I'm so glad you could get away. This is Caesar Peters, Edgar Long, James McIntyre, William Marsh. This is Moses. That is my slave name. Uh, my real name is Mohoro. Thank you. My slave name is the only name that I am blessed with. <laughs> Are you Mandinka? No. I've never been to Africa. I was born on a slave plantation in Virginia, in America. Caesar printed the pamphlet that I gave you. I fought for the British against the colonists. Against George Washington, the champion of freedom, no less. The champion of liberty for everybody, except his own slaves. <laughs> the British promised me a passage to England and a pension when I got here. I got the passage right enough, but the pension never came. So I had to work for a printer in London. And now I am a partner in the business. Oh, wait a minute. Are you a free man? Not all black men are slaves in England. There were hundreds of us in every city, thousands in London. Some of us run our own businesses. We own our own houses. Some of us even mate with the native women. Rather successfully. And this is allowed. Come back with me. No. I cannot leave my people. There are five of them in the house. Some of them are children. Mahuru, you're among friends now. We are the Bristol Fellowship Society. A vote for every man, abolition of the slave trade, and no sugar in your coffee. Will you join us? I did not know that such men existed in Bristol. Not everyone's like your masters. There are many in London, in Parliament. That's our gathering of elders. Parliament, that's a place where rich men make laws to make themselves richer. There's a good man there, William Wilberforce. He's forcing Parliament to end slavery. When we win, you will be free. But we still need evidence. We need to tell people what it's like on the slave ships. We must make them understand. You remember? I do not remember it. 
I live in it. Every night. The sound of a baby crying. For a day, a week, a month, it cried until it cried no more, and I could do nothing. Then the mother cried. She would not give it up. They tried to drag the baby from the mother, but she would not let go. So they threw the baby and mother overboard. And I could do nothing. God have mercy on ourselves. Tell me the whole story. I'll print it. Francis, look, uh, I've been to see some abolitionists. They say that slavery would be ended, that Mr. Cole will have to set us free. No, my Lord. These are dangerous radicals. You must not see them. That is a lie. The whole of you have been listening to. One of them, a black man, told me that you've been one of the slaves of free man. They will be caught and hanged for treason. You must swear never to see them again. Or what? It is you I'm thinking about. Can you not see your safety? It is you. free of this house. Mary's fever is broken. I think she may be on the mend. The blackbird takes a brown bird for its mate. Thank you, Elizabeth. And good night, both of you. Dingo Boy came to England direct from the Gold Coast. One of the coal slaves we've heard so much about, and the very first one to come to the market at auction. There is a handsome young buck who'll give me 20 guineas to start. Come on, 20 guineas. 20 guineas there. 30. Where's 30? Who's got 30? 30 guineas. Thank you, sir. 40, 40, 40. Thank you. Now, what about 50? Can I have 50? I am not bidding, sir. I am here to give notice that this sale is taking place entirely outside the law of this land. The Lord Chancellor of England has said that as soon as a Negro sets foot on English soil, he is to be considered a free man. Well, the Lord Chancellor can kiss my lily white arse. <laughs> That's true. Dr. Hadley, I'm sure you are aware that there is no such ruling. Please, sir, this is a perfectly fair sale. You will find sales such as this on any market day in any town in England. Wearing it is not a fair sale, and you know it. I have an application here for a writ of habeas corpus pertaining to this Negro, which I propose this very hour to set before the justices. Unless this lot is withdrawn forthwith. You have heard, I take it, 
that Justice Peabody was taken gravely ill two days ago and that a new chief magistrate has been sworn in. It is our good Mr. Shaw here. You <laughs> must have heard. <laughs> Silence in the court. Case dismissed. Yeah. Who give me those 40 guineas? 40, 40 guineas. Is there 50? 50, 50, 50. Thank you, sir. 60. I must have 60. Come along. 60 over there. Thank you. 70. Do I have 70? 70, 70, 70 guineas. Any advance on 70 guineas? 70 guineas. Come on, 80 guineas. I need 80 guineas, 80 guineas. Come on now, 70. I want 80, 80. Where's 80? 80, yes, thank you. Sold to you, sir, at the back. 80 guineas it is to Sir Charles Fairley of Clearwater, Jamaica. Is Mr. Cole in this study? Besides, if a customer knows he had business there, I had hoped to take some air on the dance. Moses can accompany you. Moses? Mrs. Cole wants to walk to Clifton. You must go with her. Up in your waistcoat and follow at a respectful distance, five paces. <laughs> I'll take the water. Take a fill of love until the morning. Let us solace ourselves with loves.
Sarah. You have no business. No insurance for the rose. Before God, I tried, Sarah. She sailed before I, I joined the Merchant Venturers. I could not get it. She had to sail. She set off in the Middle Passage safely. It could all be well, and we hear nothing till she docks in October. And the trade goods. Why so much? The pack tight. How many? 600. 600 slaves? And there's only storage for three. There is another thing. They are to be sold to Senor Calvador. For gold. The Spanish. You're smuggling to the Spanish. It will make our fortune. We could double or treble our profits, clear our debts at a stroke. Without insurance, the first blow that gets up will lose everything. She'll take us down with her. Oh, Sarah. I had meant to spare you this. This is all Francis's fault. It's all the sats by Francis to pay for her satin gowns and gold trim bonnets and that preposterous house. I've been sick with worry, Sarah. What do these marks mean? They mean I was in the Balawa, a kind of priest, like your father. Uh -huh. <laughs> People suppose I could tell into the future, although I don't think I was very good at it. Did you foretell this? Oh, yes. All of it. Many years ago. <laughs> <sighs> this place reminds me of my father's parish at Whiteley's. Can't be many other days like this, Mahuru. If they catch us. Don't. We both know. My uncle wrote to me. He thinks you'll make just the right birthday present for my aunt, and Josiah thinks you'll pay over the odds. Birthday is not until November. You'll be much safer there. And I will be able to visit you. Why can I not look after my own safety? Why can I not think about yours? everyone. I thought you said business was picking up. Uh, a little disappointing today. Uh, will you take some of the waters or some refreshing tea? What's going on? It's your job, Mr. Forsyth, to bring in the... the giddy multitude. Where is it? Uh, there may be a number of circumstances, Mr. Cole. Well? The subscription rates are a little high. Higher than Bath, I believe. Uh, perhaps we are now too exclusive, too fashionable. Well, let us cut the rates, then. <laughs> uh, I do not know if that will suffice. Uh, we were expecting some very genteel patrons, as you know, some persons of quality. Uh, the persons of commerce are, uh, of course, as you know, most welcome. Uh, but even some of those have not graced us much of late. And some of the people here are, are so, well, <coughs> ill. It's a spar. They are supposed to be ill. Yes, but, but they are ill in the wrong sort of way. They are so dreadfully ill. I don't know if this one will last out the morning. 
Mr. Wakeham, the undertaker, jested that he wanted to open for business in the colonnade. Is that it? There is also France, of course. France? Yes. Uh, the young and fashionable are all off to Paris for the Vénemore there, you know. <laughs> Liberté, égalité. Best of foresight! Fraternité. We must make some economies here. Uh, excellent thinking. Starting with you. I want you to pack your bags now. I want you out of here by this afternoon. I pack my bags. I'll have you know I have had a valet all my life. Or leave them here then. You are dismissed. How dare you, sir? No one dismisses. Nantwich Forsyth! I have resigned. <laughs> Everyone said you were sold a dead canary. Everyone said the venturers were playing you for a fool. <laughs> <laughs> to Caesar Peters, I have begun to write the history you have asked of me. But thoughts of the past now hang less on my mind than hopes for the future. Our hopes for Wilberforce vote in Parliament our hopes for freedom. That you have seen Matthew in London is a blessing indeed. Let us pray the news you bring on Tuesday next will save him from a passage to the plantation and liberate us all. I do not know how long I can stay. There he is. Well? Tell us what happened. Wilberforce opened the debate. He said that they were all guilty of a great crime, he as much as anyone else, and it was time to put the matter right. And? And nothing. Half a dozen leapt up to speak. Well, they never spoke in favor of slavery. No, they're too cunning for that. They said they weren't sure. They said they needed more evidence. And when one sat down, another jumped up to take his place. And the vote? There was no vote. They'll drag it on forever. They'll chatter and chatter until the cause is lost. And he, he'll be in chains forever. Celebrating. with the rest of them, I expect. The vote is lost. The vote to end the slave trade is lost. It would have made no difference in any case. There's nowhere for you to go. And there are even fewer places for us to go. Please, stop. Please. Stop. Stop. 
must go tonight. Oh, we I must. I cannot. We must. I was this. child. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Why sorry? I do not think it will be our child. I do not think it is possible. Possible? The likelihood is greater that it is Josiah's. And we must pray that it is so. Have you told him yet? To his face. He will make a fine father indeed. Francis. No, Mahuru, no. You keep saying that, but you never say why. I do say why. The baby, my health, your safety, and the shame of my family. My baby. It is Josiah's. I know it. I'm certain of it. And if it is, what then? Do you want to see your son grow up to inherit slaving ships? Or will you be proud if he increases the loads and profits of your family trade? No, of course not. And if you're wrong, if it is my child, and you have a brown baby, an African baby, what will you do? What will you do if I'm not here? That is why I shall ask for Dr. Hadley, because of his sympathies. I thought he could take it away and say that the child was stillborn. And what? Slung in the docks? Drowned in a barrel? No, taken to be cared for elsewhere. I'm simply trying to keep us all safe. You will be safe if you get a white lease to be my aunt's birthday present, as we discussed. The baby, if it is not Josiah's, will be safe in Dr. Hadley's care, and I shall be here. And this is what you want? Yes. To send me away? To throw my child into the care of strangers so you can keep your precious reputation unharmed? It's what I want. You are killing me. You are forcing me away. You can never have loved me. It's what I want. Cole and Sons. Think of it, my dear. Cole and Sons. Oh, wait till I tell Sarah. What a week of wondrous news. The rout of Wilberforce, and now this. Josiah. We must bend our thoughts to names, of course. In addition to Josiah, naturally. Um, how does, uh, how does Fitzwilliam sit with you? Josiah, I should like the doctor to attend to me. Of course, my dear, of course. I should like it to be Dr. Hadley. Very well, my dear.
was really cut the meat so thin you could read the Bristol Journal through it. I saw your old friend today. Ruth, in the town, in Mrs. Waring. <laughs> well enough she is. Off to London she is with her mistress for a few months. One day you are angry like a bull. The next, you are laughing like a donkey. You think I haven't seen this before? You think I do not know? Nah, let him alone. I will not. The air is turning cold. It will be that winter again. You say we will leave. You say you know good men who will take us away. When will they come? They will come. They will come. I'm uh, after the hot well. More trouble with the pipes. Why they have to send for me every damn time? Oh, the hot well. What are you doing hiring a horse? We can't go on affording your extravagance. Dr. Hadley said I should ride to the Downs. The exercise will be very good for the child. Moses will have hold of the reins. He has very strong hands. Moses? with me today, Mahuru. I am never cross with you, Francis. I think this horse may be cross with both of us. If it reaches the top of the hill, it'll be a miracle. <laughs> Good gracious. What are these amounts for? With wishing? Washing. Washing the draperies? Every day? The devil? Good God! What? What's happening? They're drilling on top of the hill, sir. What? Who's drilling? from Bristol. Mahuru, please do not speak of that. Are you tired? A little. Not as tired as that horse, though. I don't think it was built for two. <laughs> do you not enjoy riding with me? Holding me tightly? Yes. You have a very good seat. Thank you. <laughs> means you ride very well. Come on. Excuse me, business. Hey! What's going on? Oh, I, I wouldn't get too close if I were you, sir, madam. It's it's not quite safe. Never mind that. What is all this? Oh, this is to be the new hut well, sir. We're drilling for water. What do you mean? Oh, it's a grand new project, a new spa. We're drilling down for the hot water and building a handsome assembly room. What hot water? There's only the hot well spring down below here. Oh, but that's the one. We're going to tap it. You can't do that. I shall report this to Mr. Waring and the Merchant Venturers at once. But this is Mr. Waring's project, sir. Owned by the Merchant Venturers and leased to him. Surely we have a legal right to the water. They can't just take it. I say the lease. I'm a trader. I sail ships on the sea. 
you don't buy the sea. Water is always there. Who's done this to you? Who's stealing our water? Stephen Waring. He sold me the lease. He lent me the money. Now he's made it all worthless. First and last, he's plucked me like a little pigeon. about the hot well. You are stealing my living from under my nose. You are stealing my water out of my very pipes. We leased you the buildings only, Josiah. The spring water, alas, is the property of every man. It is the property of God. <gasps> and you think yourself God, don't you? Well, there may be enough for both of us, Josiah. We merchant venturers look after our own, you said. Well, let's see if you can look after your own now! We have standards in this city, Cole. If you cannot do business like a gentleman, you cannot do business. Repayment of my loan to you of a thousand guineas is due at Michaelmas, secured against your house. Throw him out. Do you think I do not know him? The boy who was chained to me on the ship. The boy who wanted to break free and swim home. Did you get to speak to him? I tried. He did not know me. He did not speak. He did not move, Mohoro. We must take him back. How much longer before we fight? Before we fight back against him! We have our own rules in Jamaica, sir. Can't run the place without them. A few Frenchy lovers in the House of Commons can't stop us. Still, if they blocked the slave ships, we'd have had to get the breeding rate up, that's for sure. All hands to the pumps, as good old Josiah Cole would say, eh? <laughs> <laughs> there is something you should know about our good Mr. Cole, Sir Charles. He has not been himself of late. Uh -huh. In truth, I'm afraid to say he is deep in debt. He has dug such a hole for himself that it is beyond even our powers to help him out. My God, poor Josiah. And with that devilish fine badger of a wife of his. I brought one of his niggers over, especially to show him, you know. One of the worst he was. Vicious little rat picker. A couple of months of hot sun and hot metal. I can take him anywhere now. Trust him with my life. Poor Josiah, though. I'll need to find a new monkey peddler. We may be able to help you there, Sir Charles. We can't wait for Parliament. We must send it all the same. There'll be another bill, another battle. Another battle where the common man is shot to damnation. Watch yourself. 
Well, 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 what have we here? Our friend's a little black magus, no less. My apologies, sir. I didn't see you there. I didn't mean you. There's meaning these. The good doctor's little black maggots crawling across his pages. You see, Bates, the trade is all but finished, whether you like it or not. Next year, or the year after, the devil's tide is going out, and soon there'll be nothing left but the scum on the key, yellow and stinking, idle and damned. When we were on the Francesca together, Hadley, there was a dozen of us against 300 of them. You needed me. You needed me to keep your cock safe in your britches. And now you call me yellow. An idol. And you want your little black magus to feast their way through the very timbers of England. All those years we spent together at Sea Bates, I really should have taught you to read. I'm so sorry. You'll be sorry, Hartley. Damn you! He thinks he has the legs of me. But he's not carrying it on the rolls. When the rolls comes in, sails spread. The heart straining in the final legs, laden with gold, smelling a rum. Should be as rich as the Queen of Sheba. Rich enough to put all of the merchant venturers to flight. We should not rest our hopes on the rose. She's late. There's been no word of her. Come back to Queen Square. You'd be more comfortable there. No. This is where I shall make my stand. Matthew still have the use of all of his limbs? It's his mind they have stolen, Stuart. Yes, but the law may not be so generous on that point. We can always apply for another habeas corpus writ once he's put onto a ship. Habeas corpus? Laws and bills? That's all you ever talk about, Stuart! Tell me, which of these laws has ever been written by a black man? Meantime, come on. Yes. Hey, sir, you've got to come. A cart has tipped over up my Rickot Way. A lady's under it. Come in. Wait there for a second. Shall I come? Um, no, it's not very far. This way, sir. Oh, yeah, it is an inch of the privities. Rather, it is an inch of the mind. Now, if a man 
as a knife thrust into his heart. How long will it take such a man to quit this earthly place? Hey, eh? Say, for instance, this knife. Now, I'm wagering. Half a minute. What will you as a doctor? What was that? Full minute. I'd say that was fair. The game is afoot. Now, if you should win on the wager, I will keep your spoils in your stead. For reasons which I think are evident. Seen with Bates at the auction. The boy. Come on. <gasps> Blasted urchin saw everything. So we cannot stay here, that's the problem. I cannot leave Bristol without the others. Look, I do not think I can get a carriage at this hour, and we cannot risk it on foot. You of all people have to help me now. I shall. Caesar! Open the door! Caesar! Are you hurt? <laughs> the sound with stars is an uproar. Some of Bates' men have fetched the rope. They're ransacking Bristol, looking for you. They've stormed the tavern, thinking to find you there. But our men have uh, bolted the doors and put up their fists, sturdy as the pikemen of Paris. You mustn't be found here. You have the devil's luck that I'm in Bristol tonight. I think I can get you to London. All of us? Yes. You have your wish at last. I'm leaving. I did not want it like this. Not like this. Do what's best for you and the child. My child, Josiah's child, it doesn't matter. As if it were my child. The others are waiting. Is there any wake? I know. God be with you always, my wife. Charles drinks there most nights. Drink until dawn. It take the work of two minutes. Half the city's after your neck, Mahuru. I can stay here. We cannot risk it, Sean. We'll try. We cannot take it by force.
Nati le bang, can samba su okona le bang. You talk to him. Mary is with us, and Naomi, and Mahuru. Macho. Tilo kandi dale. Nyanta samuna alale. To me. <laughs> I told him the sun was awake and we must jump aboard it. <laughs> so you are Mandinka then? I think not. There was a Mandinka man on the plantation in Virginia. He used to say that every morning at about five o'clock. That's all the Mandinka I know. <laughs> Rattling tells me Francis is off for food. That won't suit the infant. The infant? Of course. The infant. He... He must have a power. Is that the name for it? Yes. We, we'll, we'll make him a power. for today, Mrs. Bradley.
wife. for you. Will the others be safe in London? They will make their own lives. They will be free. I think Josiah is losing his mind. He's removed most of the furniture to the warehouse. And he guards it there. Like some mad old mastiff. <laughs> And Sarah? She stays with him. And Cook has been dismissed too. So you're on your own? I have a maid of all work. They have engaged her to come in during the day. I should never have gone. But I had to see the others safe out of Bristol. It's more that you should never have come back. Why? Won't you come back to London with me now? Why? Because you would not be safe. I would be a chain around your neck and the child would not be safe. And it would be safe here? Yes. I don't know. Absolutely. The rose is home. We're saved. Where's my ship? Where's the rolls? Josiah. I'm sorry. We tried to lighten the load, see if we could save her. You threw the slaves overboard? Some of them. But the girl was too strong, we had to take the skiff. It was all we could do to reach ashore ourselves. She went down in minutes. Cargo too. All six hundred. Oh, all six hundred of them. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I swear it doesn't matter. You can take the furniture in the house in Queen Square. You can take the daisy there. You can even take Francis. We still have our warehouse. We still have the key. We still have our air. We'll still be able to trade, don't you see? Even if it's only borrow the sugar a shilling a time, we'll still be able to trade. <laughs> She's well enough. But I hear that Josiah is ruined. The ship is lost. Stephen Waring will repossess this house as soon as Frances has given birth and she will have to join them at the warehouse. But is she well enough to travel? No. I would not advise it. Have you heard from London? Have they found Root? No, but they're well. Mary and Naomi are at school. Mark's helping Caesar in his printing works. Elizabeth is working as a housekeeper. She and Caesar, they... 
have an understanding. <laughs> and Matthew? He's much improved, but he's yet to find work. And how are you? <laughs> I sleep with a pistol under my pillow and another on the counterpane. <laughs> Reading, writing. Here tonight, it's as though all the clocks are suspended. When the world without day or night, without end or beginning. There will be no end. Wake up. Mm. Wake up, it's late. <laughs> Go. Go now. Go to my uncle's at Whiteley's. He may still expect you, remember? You will come for me then. Yes, yes, but if you love me, go now. I thought I'd see our baby come. Swear you will come for me then. I swear. Go. Go. stock. Yeah. They thought they would have me stock, lock and barrel. Oh. <laughs> Sarah. They thought they had me scraped clean. Clean as an empty hog's head. But I have them by the ears. of China. Pray, sir, do not tell me about trade. Do I know you? Uh, uh, Mr. Cole, uh, I am most grateful. Oh, come, come. Let me show you the cellar. Uh, Mr. Cole, uh, give me your hand. It's been a pleasure to do business with you. I will send my footman with a promissory note of 150 guineas before dinner. 
I will not detain you any further. Give me your hand. Sir. Sir. The pleasure is mine. The pleasure is mine. Now there is the astute man of business. There is the man who understands trade. You are a gentleman, sir. A true-plated, copper-coated, gold-leaf, silver ingot of a gentleman, sir. No. No. Will you take a glass of... Will you take a glass of rum in my study, sir? I have here a new barrel just broached. Well, he certainly speaks well enough. Yes. But look at the state of him. How much should I say I'd give coal for him? I, I believe it was a hundred guineas, your lordship. Hmm, was it? My God. <laughs> well, at least he'll have news of Francis. How is she? Sit down and rest if you want. No, it helps. Oh, it helps if I walk. Oh. 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 Stop moving. That's normal. It's perfectly all right. No, it's still, it's dead. I know it's dead. Please, don't say such a thing. Say it, I shall be on my knees praying for it. Oh. I don't want to give birth to a slave trader. Oh. Enter. You are a most excellent slave, Moses. I've written to Frances complimenting her on you. She will almost be in confinement by now, I expect. Now, fill my bath. <laughs> gently, gently, gently. How 
are you both today? Very well. The maid has gone to fetch Sarah Cole. I must go to Mahuru at Whiteley's now. You really should be resting. I cannot stay here. I knew that as soon as I saw him. You must take Mahuru and him and me to London. I've engaged a wet nurse to travel with Let me have it. I'm sorry, we're leaving. You may do as you wish, but that child's not yours to take. Hand it over. Get out of our way! There are men in this town who catch you before you fetched a mile along the London road. Take it. Go on. Take it. Oh. Stuart, no. You know, I don't think my brother even remembers you now much less his famous son and heir. You'll not need me dogging your footsteps. You'll have far more than that to contend with now. Josiah always said you should take your chances in life. Now I'm taking mine. You're right. You're right. We must all take our chances on this earth. my home. These are the Whiteley's woods. I want to stop here now. I used to come here as a child and watch the stars come out. I never dreamt I'd have a child of my own. He is beautiful, isn't he? He's perfect. I knew he'd have the strength for the journey. His father's strength. Shh, rest. And then we will go on to London. I always knew he'd be your son. But I wanted you to go away, to be safe. I was so frightened for you. And then I wanted you to come back so much. 
rest. Tell me tomorrow. There won't be a tomorrow. Francis. Tell me about Africa. And I'll sleep a little. You will be well when you reach Oyo. You will like the plains. And the trees. Oh, the trees. They're wide and broad and spread a roof of shade from the hot sun. And in them are birds. Thousands of sweet birds singing. I shall take you to swim in the river where the sand is white and the water is clear and the fishes who swim around you and nibble at your white skin they will think that you're a lily a water lily all white and pink and sweet. And then I shall take you to the forest. I shall take you to the forest and we will sing and dance. I shall tell Lord Scott that the baby died in Bristol. And we shall make sure that she's laid to rest. No fear. Come. It's dawn. You must go. Go? Go where? The coachman will take you to see the Peter's house in London. I shall join you. Is there a future for me in this land? For me and my son. What finally ended slavery in Britain was not William Wilberforce's abolition movement, but the Industrial Revolution. With the rise of the factory system, slavery simply became obsolete. With iron and steam and all those ingenious new machines, 
The Industrial Revolution meant there were huge fortunes to be made in manufacturing. The money produced by the old slave trade was trifling compared to the riches to be made from the new factory system. As the importance of the slave trade declined, Parliament could afford to do the humane thing for which Wilberforce had fought all his life and abolish it. Wilberforce was a deeply religious man, a member of Parliament and a good friend to Prime Minister Pitt, but he didn't live to see British slavery totally abolished. It wasn't until 1807, 20 years after we saw Mahuru riding away with his son, that Parliament outlawed the slave trade. Another entire generation passed, however, before it abolished slavery itself throughout the empire. The bill was passed one month after Wilberforce died. That was in the 1830s. By then, Mahoro would have been an old man and his son middle-aged. Still, Britain was 30 years ahead of the United States with abolition and did it without war. The irony is that while the Industrial Revolution made abolition possible, the brutality of those early 19th century factories reduced British workers to conditions that were only slightly more humane than slavery. For Mobile Masterpiece Theatre, I'm Russell Baker. Good night. Thank you.